Well, thanks for joining us for another session here at Sanitation Ministries. And we're going to be going over more eschatology and uh, reinforcing the principle that there is a post-tribulation rapture of the church. Not at all a pre-tribulation rapture. Not based on what I'm saying, but based on what we read in the Bible. And so we're going to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. To the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as it is only fitting, because your faith is greatly enlarged and the love of each one of you toward one another grows even greater. Therefore, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions, which you endure. This is a plain indication of God's righteous judgment, so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which indeed you are suffering. For after all, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well. When the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. And he, when he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day and to be marveled among all who have believed, for our testimony to you was believed. To this end also we pray for you as always that our God will count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with power so that the name of our Lord Jesus will be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And we would ask God's blessing upon the reading of his word. And at this point, we're going to take a closer look at some key verses in that wonderful passage uh, just read and examine it further. And one of the things I wanted to just point out about this passage in 2 Thessalonians is that it is in the context of eschatology, in the context of the coming of the Lord. And as we can see, as we skip ahead, um, to chapter 2, just briefly, we talk about the man of lawlessness being revealed. Um, So right in chapter 2, he's immediately talking about that the coming of the Lord Jesus will not happen until the man of lawlessness is revealed. So the context of this letter to the Thessalonians is looking ahead, looking towards the end times looking forward to the Lord Jesus. And we looked at that in the last video that we did in 1 Thessalonians, is the context. And I think that's important to know. This isn't just a letter to a church and to these people specifically, although it was that as well. It is a prophetic uh, letter talking about the end times and how we are not to be deceived. And there's a lot in chapter 2, and maybe we'll um, get to that on another uh, session. But for now, let's go back to the passage at hand in chapter 1. That the Thessalonian church was a strong church that was faithful. And see what he says. Therefore, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance, see that, and faith in the midst of all your persecutions. 
okay and so we're going to really focus on that a lot in this session persecutions in the church what does that mean and um, the afflictions which you endure and we've again read that word over and over again haven't we the idea of endurance so we'll keep that word in mind too endure this was plain in indication of God's righteous judgment so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God worthy of the kingdom of God for what endurance of afflictions and persecutions see that for which you indeed you are suffering and to give relief there's that key to you who are afflicted and to us as well when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven so there is the key right there to give you relief from what all of this persecutions that we have seen over here in the preceding verses and afflictions we will be having relief so the question is when when does this relief come from persecutions as we look forward into the coming of the Lord Jesus when is it going to happen? Well, let's read on. When the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, remember those from the preceding study, and flaming fire, we have flaming fire here this time, and the pointing out of the retribution dealing retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it answers the question of when. Is the relief going to happen before? No. It is going to happen when Jesus will be revealed from heaven. Right there. It'll happen when Jesus is revealed from heaven. And so I really think this is the key. This verse right there is the key. When the Lord Jesus will be, will be, it's not a matter of if, he will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. And I would also point out glory dealing out retribution payback time wages are due now payday has come to those who what do not know god don't know god and to those who do not obey the gospel of our lord jesus so i think in that passage alone right there and i remember dr john piper saying that this is the key verse that made him post-tribulation in that position, despite massive amounts of pre-tribulation rapture teaching. He said he cannot read it in the Bible. And um, I can see that as well. The um, key verse is when Jesus is revealed, that is when the relief comes right there. It will give you relief. To you who are what? Afflicted. Just as the Lord Jesus said, you will be hated among the nations for my sake. The world hates you. The world hates me. It will also hate you. We recall the Lord Jesus saying that. And so as we look at this and continue to read, um, and what happens to the people who do not know God? And this is a really solemn warning to people out there who do not know God. People out there who see it fit not to acknowledge God. Remember that in Romans 1. 
People that don't thank God, they take all the blessings out of life and don't thank Him and give Him praise and glory. And moreover, they do not obey the precious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those people, what's going to happen? They will pay a penalty. They will pay a penalty of what? Eternal destruction. Away from the presence of the Lord. Away from the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of his power. When he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day. And there you have it again. He comes to be glorified in his saints on that day. And he, the Lord Jesus, to be marveled at. See that? One of the things I don't like about the rapture doctrine, which we looked at before, is that the people seem to marvel at the church right? The church being raptured up all of a sudden and disappearing, like some of those movies have um, exhibited in the theatrics. The church is being raptured. They're caught up, and everybody is marveling at that. What I want us to really understand here is that we're not going to be the ones anybody are marveling over at the end of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to be the one who everybody is marveling at. He is the one who is coming down with power and glory. People I don't even think are going to even notice the church is gone. When they see Christ Jesus coming with flaming fire... Dealing out retribution and payback to those who do not know God. The last thing they're going to worry about is the church has gone up to be with the Lord. <laughs> okay? They will be marveling at the Lord Jesus. And all who have believed for our testimony to you was believed. He will be getting all the glory. One thing we always got to keep in mind, I think, is so important in the church, is that the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father get all the glory. Not people, not men, not kings, not pastors. The Lord Christ alone will get the glory. He will share his glory with no one. And so the marvel will be on that day when complete darkness envelops the whole world and there is no sun, moon, or stars. And he comes shining forth like lightning from the east to the west, Christ Jesus alone will get all the glory in that day. And he will be marveled at among all those who have believed. And so understand that. And as we do and as we continue on with this study, may we be blessed as we have a clear and solid biblical understanding that Despite persecutions and sufferings and afflictions, as we read in these preceding passages, that God will keep us, and he has promised to give us relief. And we will endure, endure, again, endure right there. We will endure as in Pilgrim's Progress, endure to the very, very end. Thanks for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed the study on 2 Thessalonians chapters 1, verses 3 to 10. And please join us next time and subscribe and like if you have enjoyed this video.